Hi, I'm Tim Bradner with the Alaska Legislative Digest. Thanks for joining us at Capital Views. And we're here today with Chris Rose of Renewable Energy Alaska. Uh, welcome, Chris. Thanks, Tim. It's nice to be here again. Well, Chris, uh, after Texas recent events, uh, power supply and reliability is on what's on everybody's mind. So maybe give us some big picture. Where are we going with energy use and, and how reliable is our Alaska electric grid? Well, it's a great question, because as you say, what happened in Texas uh, is really getting people to think. Um, we're increasingly relying on electricity because as we move toward electric vehicles, of course, people will be relying on the grid for that. Uh, electric Electricity from renewable energy like solar and wind is increasing very, very quickly. The price of solar, for example, has come down almost 90% in the last decade. The price of wind has come down 70%. They're now the cheapest forms of electricity on the large grids in the world. And we're also seeing the price of batteries and energy storage go down. To give you some example, uh, 10 years ago, it would have cost about $130,000 to make a 100 kilowatt hour battery for your car. Obviously not making it very easy to purchase one. Today, that same battery would cost about uh, $12,000. So it's come down uh, by a factor of 10 just in the last 10 years. So all these things are really uh, swirling around. And here in Alaska, we have finally gotten uh, a, a mandate from the state legislature for the largest grid in the state, which we call the rail belt grid that connects Homer and the Kenai Peninsula up to Anchorage and all, all the way up through to Fairbanks and the Matsu to work together and to have uh, a, single stint, uh, a single set of reliability standards and interconnection standards and I think really importantly, a, a single set of planning. Uh, the, the five now, there used to be six rail belt utilities, have all been operating uh, on their own since they started really literally out of the wilderness 60, 70 years ago. And now they're coming together so they can increase reliability. Uh, for as uh, weak, roughly, uh, of a grid that we've got, I mean, it's just a single strand, it's not redundant, um, it goes uh, 600 miles north south. For as weak of a grid as we have, we actually don't experience that many power outages. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we haven't come close. And of course, unlike Texas, we don't have a choice to connect or not. We are literally by ourselves here in Alaska. There's no interconnection in Canada or some other state that we could be next to. So uh, the legislature uh, created the opportunity for electric reliability organizations or EROs to form around the state. And right now uh, in the rail belt, there is a group that is working to form an entity and there's a, a bunch of rules being made by the Regulatory Commission of Alaska to implement Senate Bill 123 that was passed last year. So Chris, the, uh, a key part of it though is, is the technical standards to make sure that the, uh, you know, is the, is the different utilities up and down the rail belt connect with each other. Some of them are, are it's important to have a, a, a common set of technical standards. So, you, you know, the power transfers don't trip up and cause systems to go down. That's right. In the lower 48, all of that's regulated by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, except in Texas. And so uh, FERC- Except in Texas. <laughs> right. uh, FERC standards are, I think, the, the rough approximation of, of what the rail belt is going to use. They're looking at the FERC standards and and uh, we are trying to decide which ones apply to Alaska. And you're right, it, without a single set of reliability technical standards up and down the rail belt grid, it's very hard for there to be that kind of uh, reliability day in and day out. So utilities have come together. They are um, now under a mandate to come up with a single set of standards. They came up with a, a draft set of standards that they gave to the commission a few years ago, but they're not currently mandated to operate underneath them. Um, likewise, for entities that want to sell power into the grid, what we might call independent power producers of wind and sun, they also want standard um, standards for interconnection. So instead of having five utilities have five different interconnection standards, we'll now have one interconnection standard that's non-discriminatory and open uh, along the entire grid. So I know that in uh, Fairbanks, for example, Golden Valley has always been very, uh, it's been very important to them to be independent in power, to have enough generation so that it's, when it's 60 below in this, and they, they can, the system goes down, they can, they can keep, their, um, keep the lights on and keep the heat on. Right. Um, but we do have power transfer agreements in those, those kind of situations. And Fairbanks has a battery too. 
Right, and Homer is in the process of putting in a battery. So both Homer and Fairbanks, Golden Valley, are on the you know the south and the north end of the system. Um, they don't have as many opportunities to transfer power as, let's say, Chugach and Matanuska Electric. Those distances in South Central Alaska are just much shorter. Uh, you know, it's 300 miles north to Fairbanks and a couple hundred miles south to Homer from the Anchorage area. So, um, until and unless those interconnections are beefed up a little bit, I think both Homer Electric and Golden Valley are, are really hesitant to not be able to what's called island their system and, and be independent if they need to be in case those power transfers can't happen. Well, that's, under, I mean, they're at both ends of a long line. So that's that's somewhat understandable. Chris, in just a short time we have left, uh, we have, um, do we have independent solar and, and wind operators now selling into the system? I, we know that Coconut Region has their wind, wind turbines on the Fire Island, but we have some solar, commercial solar up in the Matt Valley too, don't we? Right, a company called Renewable IPP already has at least one power purchase agreement with Matt and Electric. I think they're working on a, another uh, wind, or excuse me, solar farm, and uh, it's, it's working. Uh, the solar farms are able to produce power at the same cost that MEA would produce power with natural gas, so on parity. Um, and that's great. We, we're seeing that in the lower 48 um, years ago, and now we're starting to see it here in Alaska. So that, that's a, a great step forward. I mean, it's very surprising you can get solar to really work with the winter, uh, you know, dark, light, darker light conditions. But I guess the snow helps at certain times of year too. Right. Yeah, you have great production starting this time of year, and you, you don't get it 12 months a year, but there are lots of appliances that we buy that we can't use 100% uh, of the time. For instance, we park our cars 95% of the time, we still buy one. So uh, it, the cost of solar has come down so much in the last decade, it's worth having it for the eight months that you can produce power. Yeah. Is it possible we could see an expansion of wind, uh, like you know, for uh, far more, more wind turbines on, tower, on uh, Fire Island? Well, we hope so. And we hope that these interconnection standards and especially the integrated resource planning that the whole grid will be doing here in the next few years will allow for us to find ways to uh, insert more variable wind and solar into a grid that's mostly supplied with uh, electricity from natural gas. And of course, natural gas is really expensive, relatively speaking, in Cook Inlet, even though it's produced there, it's about three times the Henry Hub price the utilities pay for gas in lower 48. So the more that we can uh, reduce our dependence on local natural gas, which is pretty expensive, uh, the more we can stabilize energy prices in Alaska. Well, that's that's interesting. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Um, thank you, for, and hopefully we can continue in the future. Sounds thank good. you, Chris. Have a great day.